What's up, golf addicts? David Barnett here of the Tour Junkies. Pat Perry with me in the flesh. We are in a hotel in Florida shooting some content for the PGA Tour. And we're here to bring you TJ After Dark because that's what we do. And we pick winners, by the way. Yeah, it's, the, it's the Zozo Championship. And if you're like, hey, I don't care about you guys because it's golf. Why would I care? Well, you know what? Pat just hit Jason Kokrak at 80 to 1. I talked about him on the podcast. Pat tweeted about taking Jason Kokrak at 80 to 1 last week, and he won his first tour event in 200. That's why you pay, pay attention to social media. You know, you not, not just, uh, you can't just watch this. Yeah. Even though this is a fantastic evening tonight, I'm feeling a little weird, though. It is like, a little we're strange. in a hotel room together. Um, we have separate. Well, we're in different rooms. We're in different rooms. Different rooms. But, but we're recording this. Not in that the there's same. anything wrong with that if you yeah, aren't. But we're recording this in the same room. We are. But uh, anyway. Facts. So it's we, the Zozo. Uh, it's a brand new event. Uh, well, new, same event, new golf course. We're at Sherwood Country Club in Los Angeles, California. Due to COVID, we're not overseas like we normally are in Japan, I believe, for this golf yeah. tournament. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods is your defending champion at the old event in, in Japan. Uh, but he's also rather familiar here with Sherwood Country Club. Pat's going to talk about the golf course, and then we're going to get into some sports book picks that we like over on DraftKings. So, uh, Pat, tell us about Sherwood Country Club. Right yeah, now. so let's go. We are in Thousand Oaks, California. That's a lot of oaks. Not 900, not, not 900 oaks. No, that's a lot of oaks. 1,000 um, oaks. But it's a great country club here at Sherwood. It plays as a par 72, just over 7,000 yards, so not very long. Pretty short. This is a 78-man field, again, like we had last week. No cut. This is a Jack Nicklaus design that actually has drawn some comparisons to what we saw last week at Shadow Creek. Here's the thing that's very interesting about this. Besides, I, I like the great field we have again, but you have five par threes Oof. and five par fives. That is a lot of par fives. Which is not something five. that you typically see. Sorry, I had a bug, I had a bug on my it's a quality hotel. Um, yeah, quality hotel here. But you know, in those in the par fives too, they're only like five hundred and twenty to five hundred and sixty yards. So they're not very long. Very gettable. What does that mean? Score. Probably gonna score a lot this week. But you know what? Despite the fact that you can score on these par fives, there's a lot of dog legs on this course. There is it's tree line fairways. So really you do have some angles that you gotta hit properly. It's not like you can just bomb and gouge this course. I like how because it's short, there takes a lot of strategery Ooh. to be in a, you know, to being able to get your way around this course and birdie. You know, because this is gonna be a scoring fest. Make yeah, no oh. make no doubt about it. I, I I I'm not I'm not this is not hyperbolic. Okay. Okay. These but, are some of the best players in the world right now. Yeah. To qualify for this event, you got to have some of the best players in the world. Strong field. They show up. No cut event. Five par fives. We just saw Jason Kokrak win at, uh, what, 20 under? 20 under. I, I believe that you could see 30 you under see 30. threatened. At yes. this golf course, yeah. because we thought Shadow Creek was probably going to be like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, we actually thought it was going to play tougher, a yeah. little bit tougher later in the week. And, than it and so I think I agree. You, you're going to see, see a ton of scoring. Par five scoring is definitely a scat, a stat, a scat, a scat, a scat, a scat that I like this week a lot. But listen, strokes gained approach is key. There are a lot of tiers to these greens. There's a lot of elevation on this course. So you got to make sure you're hitting these greens from the right angles. I think that's important. And if you miss the greens, you got to scramble a little bit. But still, this is a strokes gained approach, ball strikers course. That's what I typically look at when I see something like when you see 7,000 yards, you immediately think bomber, bomber, bomber. No, yeah, no, really. There's a reason here that this course is 7,000 yards. There's some it's there, a country club. Yeah, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of danger around this course. So you got to play it strategic. But you're still going to be able to score this week. I'm looking at form, ball striking, as I mentioned, par five scoring, strokes gained off the tee and approach I think are important. And then we didn't even talk about the grass surface. You got bent grass greens from – bent grass from tee to green, except for the rough, which is sure. right. But other than that, it's pure bent grass. So that is important to look at. We want to look at your good putters on bent grass greens this week. So there you go. David – 
that is the rambling course breakdown yeah. for this week's tournament yeah. at the Zosa. Yeah, I I am going hard in the paint for scores, par five scoring, birdie or better, no cut event. That's what you need in terms of DFS. Ownership is going to be extremely important. Just last week we saw Matt Wolf, okay, one of the highest owned players in the field. He sucked, okay. You got to have some ownership leverage. Obviously, you had a ton of ownership leverage with Jason Kokrak, Russell Henley, uh, just some of the names up there up top. You got to have some ownership leverage. I think that's key in DFS, but I'm going scoring. Recent form is key. You cannot walk into a birdie fest and, you know, mm-hmm. strut Connor McGregor into a birdie fest that's going to be 25 under and come in with not having any form and not having shown that you can score and make birdies in the weeks leading up. It's going to be really hard to either come out with not a lot of play or a bunch of pars and, you know, a handful of birdies to come to this event. So I want recent form. I want to see guys who are hot right now playing in this golf tournament. And I think there's potential, despite the big names, for long shot season to continue. That's what we're calling it here at Tour Junkies, long shot season S Z N like the kids. I say. think Kokrak still like the eighty to one Kokrak hundred percent long still shot. counts. Yeah, we have now hit Hudson Swafford at one fifty to one. Hudson Swafford at hundred to one first round leader, mm-hmm. and Jason Kokrak eighty to one just in the last few weeks since the restart. It's long shot season, baby, and I, I think it. even here at Sherwood with this kind of scoring, anything could happen. Pat, I have basically nothing but long shots to give the people tonight, so I will let you. Run us all the way up to the long shot. Okay, well, you like. I've got a few shorter odds, guys. I like Patrick Reed at 25 to 1. Look, this is a great course for Patrick Reed. You look at his stats, he's 19th in ball striking headed into this event. He's 21st in strokes gained approach, 20th off the tee, 10th in par 5 scoring. He's 4th in strokes gained putting on vent grass greens. I think at 25 to 1, I, you, you might hate him. But still, Patrick Reed makes for a great bet, so I like him as well. All right, so the next bet I will take is Harris English, the guy who's been in incredible form at 35 to 1, checking all the boxes this week. I like him as well. I like Tommy Fleetwood. Had to get a sponsor's exemption to come in. I don't care. Tommy Fleetwood at 45 to 1. You know what? His odds just keep keep creeping, creeping up, creeping up, creeping up, because he hasn't been playing all that great. But you know what? At 45 to 1, I will take some Tommy Fleetwood. And also, just in that same light, Paul Casey. Hmm. Paul Casey is an interesting case. He's an interesting case. Paul (laughs) Casey is an interesting case. At 90 to 1, I like him. Look, this is one of the best – Ball strikers, one of the best players in the world. You're getting him at 90 to 1 in a small field event where he could win. I like that number as well. Two long odds guys that I like. Lonto Griffin at 110 to 1 played great last week. Checking all the boxes this week. I like him as well. And another guy just is in, in good recent form, Taylor Gooch. 135 to 1. I think he's another guy that you could play as a long shot in this field. See, there, that's my bets. DB, you go. Well, it's funny that you mentioned. So I, I'm going to go, I'm going to hit the long shots pretty hard, but I am going to go with the shortest player that I, I, I'm going to go with is Brian Harmon. And I mean, mm-hmm. and I don't mean short as, as uh, he's short in stature, although he is. He's a very tiny boy. He's a short, very tiny guy. man. Uh, also, very short off the tee. Yes. But he is 100 to 1 in this golf tournament right now. And let me just tell you, Brian Harmon, despite being so short off the tee, uh, let's see, sixth in strokes game par five mm-hmm. scoring over the last 24 rounds in great recent form. I mean, very solid form. Just finished 28th last week. Putts very well on bent grass. I mean, I think 100 to 1 for Brian Harmon is a, a pretty solid number. Like I said, I'm going hard in the paint with the long shots uh with the long shots this week i I just i believe it now you mentioned lonto griffin yeah actually agree big fan griffin we saw him we saw him play quite well this past week at the cj cup gained five strokes on approach 6.7 strokes putting at the cj cup he actually gained strokes putting yeah very familiar with the put with the with the old bent grass coming off the bent grass you know good, good uh Great success. Uh, Great with, success. With Bit Grass last week and bombing it. He's aggressive. 
Um, and a seventh place finish, I think, is rather nice for Lonto considering the 110 to 1 number. Um, I think after Lonto, I'm looking at – actually, you know what? I, I, I think I want to – I do want to make a quick pivot here. I said Harmon was my shortest number. But I think Sebastian Munoz at 90 to 1 kind of kind of gets me a little bit um, here at the Zozo. Finish it gets nine. you like, like in your plums. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he got me. He 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 got me at ninety to one. I uh, finished ninth at the CJ Cup. Checks a box in strokes game par five scoring. Checks a lot of boxes actually. He's a bomber, long player. Sebastian Munoz, ninety to one. Uh, I'm I'm very interested in that. I agree with your Taylor Gooch take. We saw Gooch play quite well this past week, finishing fifth at the CJ Cup and doing everything well. So I'm in on Gooch as well. He's like one hundred thirty five to one. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna give you. I, I'm gonna give you Cam Champ. I'm gonna give Whoa. you Cam Champ, California kid. I like it, California kid. 150 to one, 10 to one for a top 10. I think that's an interesting number. Cam Champ finished 42nd at the CJ Cup. Now listen, Cam Champ sucks at putting. Can't He's putt. not a very good putter. Cannot putt. He's probably a worse putter than I. Possibly. Um, but in a 78 man field. The firepower that he has with five par fives on, he's yeah, gonna, he's he gonna, can, he's if gonna he destroy plays, the par fives. If he, he will, plays all four days and doesn't withdraw, he's gonna play 20 par fives. The guy's a tee to green monster. If he can just get a few extra putts to drop, I love the number at 150 to one for a California that, kid that. who's won who's out there won multiple times. Yeah, he's won in California, right? Nope, has he not? Pretty sure he has. Okay, never mind. Forget that. But, well, he, he probably has, but not in his PGA Tour. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm including You were thinking his high school and, and yeah, yeah, collegiate yeah, career. Yeah, and give that. me some credit there. Yeah, you forgot about that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I think Cam Champ is a an excellent long shot option. So there you go. That's kind of what we're thinking in terms of outrights, top tens. There's a few in there as well. I think Cam Champ is, is an interesting top ten bet. Uh, but check out the Tour Junkies podcast. Check out our YouTube page as well for – any updates, the website as well, tourjunkies.com. DraftKings obviously has a ton of content. Give the video here a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. I know it's still, you know, everybody's thinking about the NFL, but listen, long shot season is here, and we have been taking advantage of it. And if you've been tailing it, you are thanking us right now. Or you should be if you're not. You should be. You know, you're probably coming up with like a five-team NFL parlay and sweating the crap out of it at like 45 to 1. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're these these two knuckleheads are just over here hitting, you know, triple digit winners and eighty to one winners and, and Jason Kokrak. You can you can tail that, okay? So come along for the ride. Long shot season is upon us. Thanks for watching Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings for the Zozo Championship. Oh, may your screens be green. See you. Oh.